there are some other vector space properties that can be used to prove a set is not a vector space. And these can be deduced from the 10 axioms. So if we add v plus u, where v, u, and w are vectors, this is equal to v plus w. We want to show that this means u and w are equal. So we want to get rid of the v's. So how can we do that? Well, we know that in vector spaces, we have a negative vector. I'm going to add negative v to each side. Then because of associativity, you can change where the brackets are. So we can rewrite it as negative v plus v plus u equals negative v plus v plus w. And we know negative v plus v is the zero vector. The zero vector plus u equals the zero vector plus w. Well, the zero vector does nothing, so then u equals w. Another property is that the zero vector and the negative vector are unique. Let's start with the zero vector. The zero vector has the property that zero plus v equals v. It does nothing. Since we're trying to show it's unique, let's write zero vector one. And we could also say this is the same for zero vector two. Next, we can equate zero vector one plus v equals the zero vector two plus v. And because of the cancellation law that we've just seen, we can say that the two zero vectors are equal, which means that the zero vector is unique. Similarly with the negative vector, negative v plus v equals the zero vector. Since we're trying to show it's unique, let's say negative v1. Now we write the same with negative v2. We set them equal to one another. And because of the cancellation law, we can conclude negative v1 equals negative v2. So the negative vector is also unique. The next property is that x plus v equals u has a unique solution for x, u minus v. Let's show this is true. So we have x plus v on one side and u on the other side. And our goal is to move the v to the opposite side. So let's add negative v to both sides. Then because of associativity, we can rewrite the brackets. We have v plus negative v, so v minus v equals u plus negative, we can just write as minus. On the left, we have x plus the zero vector equals u minus v. And of course, adding the zero vector does nothing, so we have x equals u minus v. Next, we have zero times a vector is the zero vector. Now this seems obvious, but it might be less obvious to show why this is true. So let's start with the left side, zero times v. Well, we can rewrite that as zero plus zero times v, which because of the distributivity of scalar addition, we can write this as zero v plus zero v. And on the left side, we can write zero v. And I noticed that there's repetition on both sides because of the cancellation law, zero v and zero v will cancel out. So let's add on a zero vector because we can add on a zero vector and that doesn't change the opposite side. Because of the cancellation law, we can conclude the zero vector is zero times v. Similar idea for a times the zero vector, a scalar times the zero vector is the zero vector. The zero vector is the same as zero vector plus the zero vector because the zero vector doesn't do anything. Now we can multiply everything by a scalar. So a times the zero vector equals a times zero vector plus zero vector. Because of the distributivity of scalar multiplication, we have, now we can add the zero vector at any point, a times the zero vector plus the zero vector equals a times the zero vector plus a times the zero vector. I see there's repetition, so we can use the cancellation law and conclude that the zero vector is equal to a times the zero vector, where a is a scalar. This next property states that if a, a scalar, times v, a vector, is the zero vector, this implies that either a is zero or v is the zero vector. Let's take a look at the two options. So if we have a times v equals the zero vector, we have two choices for a. Either a is zero or a is not zero. What happens if a is zero? Then we have zero v equals the zero vector, and we know this is true. If a is not zero, we can multiply both sides by one over a, and we get one v equals one over a zero. We know from the previous property that any scalar times the zero vector is the zero vector, so we could say that v equals the zero vector. So when a is not zero, 
v has to be the zero vector. Next, let's see why negative 1 times the vector v is the same as the negative vector. If it is the same as the negative vector, if we do negative 1 times v plus v, our goal is to get 0. So let's see if this is true. Well, we can rewrite this as negative 1v plus 1v. And because of the distributivity of scalar addition, we can group the coefficients together. Negative 1 plus 1 times v, which negative 1 plus 1 we know is just 0 times v. And we just saw above that 0 times a vector equals the 0 vector. So then this means that negative 1 times v has the property of the negative vector, so it must be the negative vector. Our last property is that we can change the location of the negative sign. So let's see why this is true. If we have negative a times v, we know this is the same as negative 1 times a times v, and we want to show two things, so I'll make two paths. Because of the associativity of scalar multiplication, we can rewrite this as negative 1 times a v. Because negative 1 and a are just numbers, we can change the order. And we know that negative 1 times v, we just saw that, is equal to negative v. And that concludes the extra vector space properties.